The jury are coming back. <clears throat> Members of the jury, are you agreed upon your verdict? We are. Do you find the prisoner, Robert Benson, guilty or not guilty of murder? Guilty. You find the prisoner guilty, and that is the verdict of you all? That is a unanimous verdict. Prisoner at the bar, you stand convicted of murder. Have you anything to say why sentence of death should not be passed upon you according to law? I'm innocent. I'm absolutely innocent. Robert James Benson. The sentence of the court upon you is that you be taken from this place to a lawful prison and thence to a place of execution, and that there you be hanged by the neck until you are dead. The BBC presents a case for tomorrow. Another adventure by Ernest Dudley. With Cecil Parker as the famous Dr. Morell and Sheila Sim as his secretary, Miss Frame. Act of Violence. What a lonely road, Dr. Morell. It's difficult to realize we're only 30 miles from London. Which, from my point of view, lends it an added attraction. I always think that Essex is a bit cut off. Why are you slowing the car? Well, I feel positive that I'm following the directions given me by Professor Stenberg, but I'm not certain that he gave me the right ones to follow. <sighs> what was it, Miss Frail, that produced that profound sigh? Oh, it must be marvellous always to feel so sure you're right and the other person must be wrong. Uh, Professor Stenberg is a trifle absent-minded, uh, while I have to remember this locality from a case with which I was concerned. What was that, Doctor? A rather sordid, lurid affair, which wouldn't interest you in the slightest. Uh, but I recall that there was a less devious road than this to Lower Ashton. Oh, there, there's a garage ahead. How about asking there? I'll ask this man. Uh, are we right for Lower Ashton, please? Lower Ashton? Oh, you're going the long way round. What's the matter? I... well, that is... I somehow thought there was a shorter route. That's right, sir, yes. Take the second turning on the right, and that'll cut off three miles. Oh, you were right, Dr. Morell. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Anywhere in particular you want in Lower Ashton? Uh, Professor Stenberg's house. Perhaps you know it. You'd have gone miles past there. This other road, you can't miss it. Thank you. Good afternoon, miss. Good afternoon, doctor. That was funny, wasn't it? Uh, what, my dear Miss Frail? Well, that young man. The sudden look on his face. As if... As if what? As if he'd seen a ghost. I wasn't noticing anything particular. Of course you were. I believe it was something to do with you. What aroused that dark suspicion in your mind? The way he acted. I thought of something. What, again? Don't you remember? He called you doctor. Now, how could he know that? I fancy I can answer that without much difficulty. How? Because you addressed me as Dr. Morell in his hearing. Oh. Oh, did I? Oh, well, that explains it. Uh, this is the turning which should reduce our journey by three miles. More houses now, Doctor. We shall soon be there. I recollect this neighborhood. Oh, yes. That case you mentioned. Look, that, there's a signpost. Uh, Lower Ashton, half a mile. Thank you, Miss Frail. Oh, and do you see that poster? A concert at the village hall. What fun. Oh, look, Doctor. Robert Benson's performing. Uh, so I observed. The young man at the garage. That's what I was thinking. But, uh, but what, Miss Frail? I'm surprised at you, though. Indeed. Just because that's the name of the garage doesn't mean that it's his name. Do go on. Well, he, he could be an employee there. Well, I'm gratified that the Barmia hasn't dulled your sharp wits. I expect you're a little overtired driving. It so happens that I was already aware of his name. Oh. Oh, so I was right then. He, he did recognize you. I'm only surprised that he hasn't changed it. What do you mean, Dr. Morell? Where was it you'd seen him? In the dock at the old Bailey. <laughs> Lovely house, it's Doctor, with all that garden. I'm glad you're impressed. Oh, that's Professor Stenberg coming down the drive. Hello, Professor Stenberg. How nice to see you again, Miss uh, Frail. Lovely to see you, Professor. Oh, very good of you to come, Dr. Morell. Delighted, I'm sure. Come in, Miss Frail. The garage is at the back, Doctor. 
You'll find Staples, uh, my man there. Uh, he'll take your cases up to your rooms. I'll take the car around. Such a delightful old house. I hope you'll enjoy your stay. I know I will. <laughs> Come into this room. It overlooks the garden. Oh, what wonderful big windows. <laughs> oh, I enjoy sitting here in the evening to listen to the birds. Sometimes at night you can hear the old owl mooching in the wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it must be a really wonderful spot. It's most kind of Dr. Morel to come down to discuss this one knotty problem with me. Ah, I think it's lovely of you to ask me as well. <laughs> but you will want to go to your room, hmm? Uh, your suitcase will be up there by now. Staples will have seen to that. Thank you. It is the room directly overhead. There's a balcony where you can sit if it's sunny. Oh, thank you so much, <laughs> Professor. I'll go on up. Uh, dinner will be at seven. Ah, there's Dr. Morel in the garden. I'll tell him about his room. Uh, this way, Israel, up the stairs, and turn left. Thank you. <laughs> I'll go and fetch the doctor. Dr. Moran, how about a glass of sherry? Oh, it's so quiet and peaceful after London. It's extraordinary meeting that young man like that. I wish Dr. Morel hadn't shut up like an oyster about it. He really can be very irritating sometimes. I'll just go out on the balcony before I go downstairs. Oh, what a lovely evening, isn't it? I feel like the balcony scene in Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Not that anyone's ever likely to mistake me for Juliet. Oh, what a pity Dr. Morell isn't down in the garden. But there is someone there. It can't be Dr. Morell. He's in his room. Perhaps it's the gardener. Why? He's looking up here. What is it? I want to speak to you. Can't you nip down for a minute? You're the man at the garage. And you were with Dr. Morell. You've got to tell me something. And I thought it was going to be quiet and peaceful. Better do what I say for Dr. Morell's sake. What? I'm warning you. Oh. Oh, dear. All right. We'll, we'll wait there and I'll come down. For a moment, I hoped you'd... I thought you'd gone. You can't be seen from the house here. We can be heard, and if you try anything, I'll scream my head off. You know who I am. You know I'm Robert Benson, don't you? Well, I suppose you are. And Dr. Morell recognized me, just as I recognized him. He did know your face, yes. And well, what's he doing snooping down here after me? I don't know what on earth you're talking about. Why can't he let sleeping dogs lie? Really, Mr. Benson, unless you've got something to tell me, I well, I've I... got something to tell him, all right. So you let him know I'm here. Dr. Morell? Well, I'm afraid he's busy changing for dinner. Better do as I say, miss. Or it'll be the worst for him. Tell him I want to see him now. Will I? Do as I say, or else. Come in. Oh, Dr. Morell, uh, the man from the garage, he's in the garden. Young Benson? He, yes, he insists on seeing you. Does he? He thinks you're down here snooping after him. An unfortunate chance that we should have encountered each other on the way. He seems in a bit of a state about you. Yes, perhaps I should have a word with him. Uh, and I better come with you? Supposing he's got a gun or a knife? I don't think you need have any fears for my safety. Well, if you're sure you'll be all right. I'll go and speak to him. I still have changed my name and gone a little further away. Only changing a name isn't so easy. I had a chance at this garage business. Nobody tweaked me. But now you have to come down here. What induces you to imagine that I have any interest in you? Well, you were at the old Bailey when I was convicted. When they tried to make out I killed that girl. When they subsequently realized that there was a flaw in their case, uh, the prosecution, as much as your own lawyers, were responsible for establishing your innocence. It may interest you to know that I added my voice to those who believe someone other than yourself was the murderer. Then what are you doing here? You're not going to tell me it's a coincidence. Coincidence has a long arm. My presence at Lower Ashton is concerned entirely with Professor Stenberg, and nothing whatever to do with you. You expect me to believe that? Who knows? Your curiosity may yet be satisfied. They'll never get in now. Destiny possesses plenty of patience. <laughs> good night, Benson, and I hope goodbye. Uh, how does your cigar agree with you, Dr. Morell? Excellently, thank you, Professor. Oh, they've got a most luxurious aroma. Do you have some more coffee, Miss Fay? No, thank you. I sometimes think of it as a commentary upon human existence. A cigar's aroma is more exciting than the actual flavor on the palate. 
The shadow that proves to be more alluring than the substance. I think it's the same about the smell of coffee. It's nicer than the taste. Uh, surely what we are discussing is the gulf between anticipation and realization. Another example is the prisoner's dream of freedom. Almost invariably, when that freedom is achieved, uh, sooner or later, he will look back on his cell as a place of refuge against the troubles of the world uh, which actually beset him beyond the prison walls. Mm, an interesting idea, Doctor. I suppose that's why you get unhappy love affairs. I fail to see the comparison. Well, I mean, while a girl is trying to get her man, she's thinking how wonderful it'll be when she's got him. Well, when she has, she wonders if the trouble was worth it. And I suppose so, Miss Flynn. <laughs> Distance lends enchantment to the view. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like Major Penfold's car. I forget to mention that he would be looking in tonight for a smoke and a chat. Excuse me. Ah, uh, it's all right, Staples. Major Penfold, I'll let him in. <laughs> Why, dear Major, how nice to see you. Do come in. Oh, good evening, Will Better. I'm a bit later than I meant to be, I'm afraid. Yes, the rehearsals went on much longer than usual. Ah, yes, you must be very busy. Up to my eyes, Will Better, up to my eyes. <laughs> May I introduce <laughs> Major Penfold, Miss Frail? Miss Frail, Major Penfold. Good evening. How do you do? <laughs> Dr. Morel, Major Penfold. Good evening. This is a great pleasure. Professor Stanbury told me you'd be here for the weekend, and believe me, I haven't dropped in for a spot of his brandy or a cigar. Oh, no. No, that, that's merely an excuse to meet you, Doctor. Well, I'm very flattered. And uh, you, of course, Miss Frail. Oh, thank you. Uh, all the same, Professor, some brandy and a cigar wouldn't, uh, wouldn't come amiss. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Major, of course. Major Penfold is the hub around which Low Ashton social life. <laughs> yes, I try to take an interest in local affairs, you know. It's quite true. Your brandy? Oh, thank you. Cigar? Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yes, it was a pretty dead and alive hole when, when I came here. I thought I could do with a shot in the arm and all that, you know. And you certainly have made things. Um, athletic club, bridge parties, flower show, church fates, amateur theatricals. That's what I'm up to my neck in now. You've got a concert very soon, haven't you? We saw a poster on our way down. Mm. Wednesday night as ever was. Star-studded entertainment. Pity you won't be here to see. Oh, what a shame. I'd love to. Really, Miss Frail? By the way, Professor, I haven't told you, have I? No, mm. no, this will interest you, uh, Dr. Morell. Uh, well, indeed. Uh, <laughs> by this morning's post, a dramatic sketch for the show. Sent anonymously with four five-pound notes towards the church funds. Yes, if we'll perform it. What an odd idea. Hmm. The author didn't give his name at all. Not a clue. <laughs> but it's a rattling good little play. Yes, a real thriller. Just your cup of tea, Doctor. It sounds most intriguing. I had it typed out. Only two characters and gave it to my two star performers to study. Rehearsals tomorrow night after church. <laughs> Tell you what, Dr. Morell, you ought to come to the rehearsal. Yes. Give us your expert opinion. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. We're, we're returning to London tomorrow night. Oh, pity. Might have amused you. Oh, I'm sure it would be very thrilling. Odd thing. Don't you think this anonymous business? <laughs> I suppose it isn't you, Professor Stenberg. What's that, Major? <laughs> Who's written this thriller? <laughs> Hiding your light under a bushel? <laughs> Me? <laughs> I fear I don't possess quite that sort of talent. I don't know. You do a lot of scribbling. Well, I hardly think you would find it had any entertainment value. Well, I'm sure it's very useful in another way. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Fair. Why should he send it anonymously when he's so anxious to have it done? Hence the 20 quid bribe, so to speak. Well, perhaps it isn't a man, perhaps it's a woman. I fancy Major Penfold is right in assuming the author is male. Well, what makes you say that? <laughs> Whatever imponderables may lie in the recesses of the feminine mind, uh, one thing is certain. A woman would never go to the trouble indicated here deliberately to hide herself from the benefit of the ensuing publicity. Well, well not long ago there was a book by an anonymous author who turned out to be a woman. Oh, I forget her name. You've but... proved my point, Miss Frail. If she was anonymous, how was she revealed to be a woman? Pretty smart of you, Dr. Morell. I agree. It seems much more likely that it's a man. But what would be his motive? Well, paradoxically, an attempt to fix attention upon himself. He feels impelled, on the one hand, to reveal to the world at large some innermost knowledge he possesses, while, on the other, to stand back in the shadows and observe the effect of his action. Anyway, it's a pity you can't come along and see us rehearsing tomorrow night. Oh, couldn't we, Doctor? Why don't you look in just before you leave? Yes. Yes, we could do that. Oh, well, very well, Miss Frail, if it would interest you. Now, that's very good of you, Dr. Morell. I'm sure that Major Penford will be delighted. Indeed, really, it was kind of you. Yes, it'll give us a big kick to have the great criminologist watch our efforts. Are you uh, acting in it yourself, Major? No, 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 I'm... I'm kept busy uh, behind the scenes. Yes. Think of the props and the rest of it. It, it. 
It's only a short dramatic sketch, but it certainly packs a punch. Oh. I'll just go and see who, who that's for. Is that for me, Staples? Uh, someone wants to speak to Dr. Morel. Oh, Dr. Morel. I can go hold on, will you? Uh, it's for you, Dr. Morel. Oh, thank you. How does anyone know you're here? I deliberately told no one where you'd be. If you'll excuse me. Oh, I hope it doesn't mean the doctor will be called back to London. So do I. Me too. A bit of a letdown if you don't come to see our show after all. Oh, we shall be awfully disappointed. Dr. Morel speaking. It's Benson, Dr. Morel. Robert Benson. Oh, yes? Dr. Morel, I've got to see you. Really? I, I can't imagine that it can be necessary. I've already reassured you this about... This is something that's happened since I saw you. You've got to help me. I don't quite see how I could. You can, believe me, or I wouldn't be phoning you. And when I explain it, you'll see. But when? As soon as possible, tonight. This is preposterous. Oh, look, Dr. Moreau, I'm talking from the garage. But I, but I can meet you in about half an hour's time outside Professor Stenberg's house. We can talk there quietly. In half an hour? At ten. Make an excuse to get some fresh air. I'll be waiting at the drive gate. Oh, this is most inconvenient. I'll be there. Ten on the dot by the gate. And I beg of you to be there, too. And this is supposed to be a quiet weekend. Thanks for the nightcap, Mr. Uh, yes, that brandy really hits the spot. You'll have one for the road, Major? Oh, no. No, oh, thanks. I, I'm driving. Ah, here's Dr. Morell. Was it anything important, Dr. Morell? You haven't got to rush back to London tonight. No, no I'm glad to say no. So we'll see you in Miss Field at the rehearsal tomorrow night. Oh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, you come along too, of course, Professor. Oh, that's very kind of you. I'd like to. Uh, well, I must be on my way. Good night, Miss Field. Good night, Major. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Professor. Good night, Major. Good night. Is that you, Dr. Morell? It is. It's me, Benson. Listen, Doctor. Someone in this town is out to ruin me. I thought I was safe here, but I was wrong. Someone knows who I am, and they intend to blow the gap. Haven't we been into this already? I don't mean you. I'm sorry for the way I talked earlier on. No, this is someone else. Simply because I was accused of a murder I never did. After two years, when I built up my garage business and put the past behind me... What my... evidence had for all this? It was tonight at the rehearsal of the show for Church Fund. A dramatic sketch they're doing. You are concerned with the local amateur theatricals? Yes, always been keen on it. But this is a real blood curdler. And you know what it's about? The murder of a young girl. You mean the plot resembles your own case? Word for word. Practically a replica of the scene between me and her that night. You must bear in mind that dramatic plots are forever being devised by authors. It would not be unusual if one were imagined which would seem to fit the case involving you. I tell you, this has got it off pat. It's uncanny. The place, the time, the very hour. Now, those details came out at the time of the trial. Uh, the author might have been present or read the newspaper reports. I know it's someone who's found out about me and deliberately means to ruin me here so that I'll have to clear out. With what object? Oh, I don't know. But listen, Dr. Morell, there's something else I haven't told you about this play. I've been given the heart of the murderer. <laughs> I somehow imagined it might intrigue you. Uh, where is Professor Stenberg? Oh, he went off to his study for a few moments. He works late too, Doctor. Quite, Miss Fale. What an odd coincidence that Major Penfold should have been talking about the dramatic sketch. Uh, Benson is the only young man in the dramatic society which explains why he was given the role. Then it must have been written by someone locally who'd not only discovered who he was, but calculated that he would have to reenact his own experiences. Uh, that, my dear Miss Frail, would appear to be a reasonable deduction. Oh, what a rotten thing to do. And what for? Uh, various motives offer themselves, uh, but it still might be that which persuades the author to remain anonymous. You mean what you were saying uh, about it being someone who really wants to attract attention to himself? I don't understand it. Uh, man's darkest continent is the human mind, and its explorer encounters vast, arid deserts of inhibition and secret fear. Yes, yes, Doctor. Anyway, Mr. Benson's going through with it and, and playing the part. That is what I urged him to do. Uh, to run away would simply provide his unseen adversary with the satisfaction of knowing that he'd scared him off. To stay and face the consequences might discourage any further attempt upon his peace of mind. You're absolutely right, Doctor, of course. I'm gratified to learn that you are in agreement with me. Uh, if he does it, he's very brave. He might also discover who's behind all this. I promised to call at his garage in the morning. He seems to have some notion the play holds a clue to the author's identity. 
Oh, it's you, Professor. <laughs> I thought I heard someone outside the door. Oh, I hope you enjoyed your breath of fresh air, Doctor. Thank you. It was quite refreshing. Forgive me deserting you, but I'm afraid I'm growing increasingly absent-minded. I have to make a note of things when I think of them. Otherwise, I completely forget. Oh, I'm sure Dr. Morell could offer some explanation for that, Professor. Ah, the inroads made by advancing age upon the mental faculties, eh, Doctor? <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm sorry about Major Penford. I'm afraid he can be a bit of a bore. Well, not at all. I'd rather like him. He's done a tremendous amount for the town, but I don't know that he ought to have inflicted his amateur theatricals oh, on well, you. I'm sure we're both quite looking forward to it, aren't we, Dr. Morell? Quite, Miss Trail. I can tell you that your presence at the air rehearsal will be something of an event for your Ashton Dramatic Society. Mr. Benson's waiting for us. Good morning, Dr. Morell. You've met my secretary, Miss Frail? Yes, we have met. How do you do? Uh, good morning, Miss Benson. Come into the office. My assistant will take over for a while. Come along, Miss Frail. There you are. There's the little drama, Dr. Morell. Thank you. Only a few pages, as you see, but they're full of dynamite. Oh, what's it called? Act of Violence. Oh, that's a gripping title. It's gripping, and no mistake, in every sense of the word. Just you read the lines before the curtain, Dr. Morell. Shall I read it with you, Doctor? Yes, go on, Miss Vail. Go ahead. Oh, this is really rather fun, isn't it? Fancy, I, I've never acted with you before, Doctor. It isn't much of a part for the girl, as you'll see. Oh, oh, no love scenes. <coughs> come, come along, Miss Vail. Uh, I'll begin here. You haven't been quite so smart up to date, my girl. Why do you say that? You've told me you live by yourself, but you haven't any relatives... And you won't be missed until you go back to work next week. But why should I be missed, then? You talk as if I'm not going back to work. Do I? How strange of me. Or am I being psychic? What's the matter? Why are you staring at me in that funny way? If you don't want to look at me, uh, look at yourself in the mirror. But what is this? I don't like it. I'm frightened. Uh, don't turn away. You'll see it all in the mirror. What's that you're taking out of your pocket? You can see it in the mirror. It's a pair of nylons. Oh, the present you promised to give me. You're mistaken. It was only one of a pair of nylons. But what's the use of one stocking? It's the finest quality. See how soft it is. Keep away. Feel the texture. No. Round your throat. Don't. <gasps> That's it, Doctor. That's how the real thing went, almost word for word. Oh, how very creepy. You can say that again, Miss Well, oh, When I read it over last evening, my blood ran cold. In actual fact, what happened, as I remember you described it in the witness box was that you put the stocking round her neck to frighten her. Well, that's all I did. And then I left her. And the real murderer came back afterwards. Yes, miss. A few minutes afterwards. And strangled her with stocking. I always maintained that the real murderer was listening outside the door. He hid when you came out and then went in. She has certainly had plenty of men friends. Of all sorts. Young and middle-aged. Rich and stupid. And a brainy sort. What are you thinking, Dr. Morell? Mm, sir? There's that look on your face. Merely a notion that has occurred to me... Uh, then uh, we shall be at this evening's rehearsal, Benson. Just to give moral support. I'm going through with it. Dr. Morell was right. I know. He always is. I'll show this anonymous so-and-so that Robert Benson doesn't scare so easily. Uh, there is one step you can take by way of an experiment uh, which might prove fruitful. Hmm? What's that? Uh, listen carefully and follow my instructions. I really can't wait, Doctor, for the rehearsal this evening. It should provide a certain amount of interest. All the same, it still baffles me that anyone could go to such lengths. It is characteristic of the twisted mind to seek to achieve its purpose by twisted means. Uh, the author of this play, a not inappropriately titled Act of Violence, evidently bears some dark secret in his soul whose weight is proving too much for his conscience. He can expiate his guilt only by making full confession in public. Oh, it, it's most fascinating in, in a horrid kind of a way. Oh, there are the drive gates ahead. Oh, what a lovely old house the professor's got. I'll turn the car in here. Oh, and there's Professor Stenberg waiting for us. So I see. He's coming with us to the rehearsal tonight, isn't he? Yes, Professor Stenberg will doubtless be quite interested in what transpires. Hello, Professor. We're back. Hello, Miss Vale. Why do you say that? You told me you were by yourself. But you haven't any relatives. And you won't be missed until you go back to work next week. I think you acted the part just as well, Dr. Morell. Quiet. 
But why should I be missed then? You talk as if I'm not going back to work. Do I? How strange of you. Or am I being psychic? What's the matter? Why are you staring at me in that funny way? And I was as good as her. You don't have to look at me. Something's different, Doctor. Shh. There's no mirror. Quiet. But what is this? I don't like it. I'm frightened. Don't turn away. What's that you're taking out of your pocket? You can see for yourself. Uh, oh, it's a pair of nylons. Oh, it's the present you promised me. You're mistaken. It's only one of a pair of nylons. What's the use of one stocking? It's the finest quality. See how soft it is. Keep away. Feel the texture no. around your no, throat. No, no, oh. oh! That's the curtain. What did you think of it, Professor? Very dramatic. Everyone will be hanging on to their seats on Wednesday night. But the ending is a bit different. Dr. Morell, where are you going? A word of congratulation to Major Penfold. Oh, he's bound to be at the back of the stage, running the show. I'll find him. I'll stay here and, and keep the professor company. Yes, do that, Miss Flail. Thank you, Miss Flail. Are you looking for someone? Uh, Major Penfold. Oh, behind the scenery on the other side of the stage. Thank you. And uh, may I congratulate you on your performance? Oh, how very sweet of you. <laughs> Hello, Major Penfold. Oh, oh. oh. Dr. Morell. May I offer my congratulations to you? But uh, you yes. appear a trifle agitated. Of course, the whole thing was rowing. Indeed. The mirror. There was no mirror. He should have strangled her while she was looking at him in the mirror, and it wasn't there. Was its presence so important? Don't you understand? That's what really happened. That's why I wrote it. That's why... Oh, my heavens. What do I say? Nothing that surprises me, Major Penfold. You mean you knew? You knew all along. It was evident that the anonymous author was someone living locally. I had already reached the conclusion that he felt an obsessive urge to confess some deadly secret. <laughs> From my own inside knowledge, it became obvious to me, moreover, that the author knew a little too much about the Robert Benson murder. <laughs> my head's spinning. I, I, I must get some air. The position of the mirror, uh, that was something which no one but the murderer could have known. I must open the door. Uh, it, it was to be your fate to come here to live, to encounter the very man who might have hanged for your crime. You can't prove anything. Leave me alone. Your conscience will never let you rest. I can't breathe. Let me get from here. Oh, there you are, Dr. Morell. Well, what did you think of it? Most satisfactory. You followed my instructions to the letter. Oh, was that Major who went out? He was in need of a little air. Well, where's he going off in his car? Well, what the devil we've got more rehearsing to do? You needn't trouble yourself about acts of violence. It was a case of one performance only. He's driving at a lick. What's come over him? He's stepping on it. What were you saying, Doctor? Doctor, oh, there you are. Hello, Mr. Benson. Where's Major Penfield? Well, he's just driven off in his car as if the devil was on his tail. What's that? It's the Major. He smashed his car. That flash in the sky. It's caught fire. You can see the flame. You saw the crazy way he drove that car, Doctor. Yes. You think he did it personally. Dr. Morell, what's happened? He did. Major Penfold deliberately drove to his death. <laughs> was another adventure in a BBC series featuring Ernest Dudley's famous character, Dr. Morell, and, of course, his secretary, Miss Frey. The artists taking part were Dr. Morell, Cecil Parker, Miss Frail, Sheila Sim, Professor Stenberg, Martin Miller, Robert Benson, Trevor Martin, Major Penfold, Rafe Truman, and other parts were played by Will Layton and Louise Gainsborough. This recorded program was produced by Leslie Bridgmont. Thank <laughs> you.